In this lesson, I will show you the right way to create smoke trails. This is very useful for emitting smoke from moving objects like trains smoke and rockets and so on. So first let's create a simple sphere and animate that. Okay. And I will go to the shelf and click on the sphere and hit enter on the keyboard. And then I will go to the four views by holding space and B on the keyboard. And then I will dive inside the sphere and I will hit tab and type transform. Okay, let's connect the transform node here. And now from the top view, I will zoom out a little bit. And then I will place the sphere somewhere here. Okay. And if you want to set a key, just hold Alt on the keyboard and click on the translate. Okay. Or if you want, let me undo that by holding Ctrl and Z. Or you can just click here Alt and left mouse click to key just the X axis. Okay. So I will set a key for all of X, Y and Z. Alt and left mouse click. Okay. And then I will move the time slider somewhere to the 70. And then I will move the sphere here. And again, I will hold Alt and left mouse click. Or you can just right click and go to channels and keyframes and click on set keyframe. And then I will move the time slider somewhere to 140. And let me zoom out a little bit. And I will move the sphere somewhere here. And again, Alt and left mouse click. And let's see now we have an animation. Okay. So I will hold Shift and middle mouse click to open the curve editor or the animation editor. Sorry. So I will hold space and G to frame the curve. And as you see, we have ease in and ease out. So I will select all and I will click on this icon to make it straight. Okay. So the animation starts at fixed speed. So now I will close the animation editor. By the way, you can open the animation editor by right clicking and going to channel and keyframes and scope parameters. Okay. So you open that. So now let's see, we have our animation. And now let's go to the perspective view. And let's see, okay. So let's go back to the object level and select the sphere. And I will go to the pyro FX tab. The first thing I will show you just how to create the smoke from the regular way, okay, or the standard way. So I will click on Billway Smoke, for example. Okay. So, so I will remove the resize container for now, or just I will disconnect uh, that. Okay, I will select the pyro and let me adjust the con container. This is not the right way, okay? So just I want to show you what's wrong with uh, this method for creating the smoke trail. Okay, so now as you see, I created the container, right? But the problem is that the moving object will come like this path in this path and going to here, right? So Houdini will calculate everything in this container. So this is really will be a nightmare for you if you create it like this way, because Houdini will, ca will calculate all the container and the smoke is in this area. So we don't need Houdini to calculate everything in the uh, container. Okay. This is really, really it's nightmare and will take a lot of time to simulate uh, that. Okay. So if I hit play, as you see, it's really taking a lot of time to calculate that. And even just we need this area, we don't need anything outside the smoke. 
so that's why i will i will show you how to create the smoke trail so let's go back here and let's go to the object level and i will delete everything delete that and i will go to the emitter and i will delete uh, these nodes okay so now let's see how we can create the smoke trail the idea is houdini will create a container in every step the uh, sphere moves for example the sphere come from here to here so we'll create a container for us and then we'll create another container and so on so this is very very useful to create a smoke trail so i will select the sphere and i will click on the smoke trail right here and let's wait until houdini calculates that as you see now houdini shows us the path for the uh, sphere moving sphere right and you see this this points houdini will create a container on every point you see in the viewport as you see in the sphere uh, in the sphere object this is very complicated but don't worry about that it's okay so i will go to object level and here you see houdini created not just the autodot network and the pyro import created another emitter container so what this node does brings or grabs the values or the animation from the sphere that we created and creating the necessary node that will help us will help the pyro to create the containers okay so i will go to object level and let's move that here and let's hit play and see what we get okay the sphere moving as you see now houdini created another container really really this is very very uh, powerful and you see it's very very fast because now houdini will not calculate anything in this area just where the sphere moves okay so this is really really great way to create the smokes okay this is useful for getting for example a smoke emitting from the train for example okay so and if you dive inside the the pyro sim you have again you have a resize container if your smoke is hitting the uh, container you can set the padding or increase the padding so you you give the uh, the smoke more space so it's not not um, hitting the container walls okay and let's say for example if your sphere is uh, moving sphere is very very fast so maybe you will see some gaps between the smoke okay so what you can do you can go to object and select the pyro and increase the sub steps okay so this is in case you have some mo very fast moving objects you just increase the sub steps and of course if you go to the pyro sim and then if you decrease the division size to add more details to the smoke this will increase decrease the subdivision for all the containers you have in the scene okay so let's play it again and wait until the calculation is finished okay that's enough just to see our result and hit play as you see now we have the smoke and let's say you want to emit fire not smoke okay so we don't have a fire trail for example here we can just go to the sphere object sorry i will go back i will go to the uh, pyro sim and then in the uh, source volume i will change the initialize to source fuel where is the fuel this is the source fuel okay we want to emit fuel let's go back and if i hit play again nothing happens because we just have a fuel another step we need to do to go back to the pyro solver and then i will see just where is that option i forgot the okay uh, this is the combustion we need to enable the combustion so now if i let's hit play and see again nothing happens let's see what we forget select the pyro 
e creation let's see what we forget to do okay so let's go back and see in the sphere object we need to do another thing here this is the let's see okay we need to select the fluid source and in the container settings and i will change the initialize to source fuel and let's see if this worked okay it worked and really as you see you need to have a good memory to re remember the place it's really confusing okay even i did that several times so always i forget i forget the place of the source fuel okay that's how you emit a fire from the smoke or do you convert the smoke trail to the fire and as i said guys this is really great way to save you time okay so i hope you enjoyed i will see you in the next lesson